Well, the media helped President Trump win election in 2020. The president certainly seems to think so, telling the New York Times, quote, another reason that I'm going to win another four years is because newspapers, television, all forms of media will tank if I'm not there, because without me, their ratings have gone down the tubes. Here's me now to discuss Ali Stuckey, the conservative millennial blogger, Ned Ryan, America, American majority CEO and former George W. Bush presidential writer, and back with us, Amy Holmes. Ali, I, I got to tell you, I'll just share the New York Times stock this year is up 36 percent. It's at $18, almost $19. It peaked at 51 bucks. They were cratering. They were on the cusp of going out of business. So there's certainly some truth to that, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. And we know statistically that it's true, not just at the New York Times, but across media outlets in general. Pew just came out with some research not too long ago saying that 62% of the media coverage of Donald Trump is negative, compared to only 20% of negative media coverage of President Obama at this time during his presidency. But I also think what Donald Trump said speaks to something a little bit deeper that's also true about the Democratic Party, is that they've deemed themselves exclusively as the party of resistance. And if Donald Trump is no longer in office and if they can't resist Donald Trump, then what are they going to do and who are they going to be? So I think it just begs the question, not just of liberal media outlets, but of the Democratic Party in general, is what do they really stand for if it's not just resisting Donald Trump? So it's right. a very interesting quandary that they've put themselves that in. Is, that is an interesting quandary. Now, Ned, I'm saying it's a symbiotic relation also because uh, the mainstream media uh, survives. They've thrived under President Trump. But he also got, right. uh, by some estimates, $2 billion worth of free marketing during the last campaign. So it didn't hurt him either. No, it didn't hurt him. I, I mean, I would argue right now the media needs Trump more than he needs them. But you make a fair point, Charles. I mean, they did give him a significant chunk of change in earned media. But right now, I think the, the media does need Trump because it kind of covers over some of their failures. Um, I, I would argue that if they didn't have this fixation of Trump, what would they really be doing, as Ali just said? You know, without Trump, they actually might be forced to be real reporters and real journalists <laughs> and really talk about facts and create original work. I don't know if they're really up to that task right now, Charles. Yeah, they, it's, it's a lot easier to bludgeon people to death than, uh, and, and forget about real journalism and just sell sensationalism right. for all of them. It's, it's really despicable. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, uh, another problem for them is, has been their fake polls. Now, one of the few outlets, your outlet was one of the few that got it right. Mm -hmm. And now you've got a poll out showing how well President Trump is doing compared to President Obama in this first year. Well, here's something you're not hearing from the mainstream media, that Trump's approval, disapproval, is at almost exactly the same place where Obama was in his first year of his presidency right now. So while the media had this love affair with President Obama, he had this huge honeymoon when he came into office, his approvals, they were they were sinking. But with Donald Trump, of course, and it's been measured, as we've just mentioned, that the media has been this constant drumbeat, this constant hammering at Donald Trump. So in a certain sense, it's sort of amazing that his approval, disapprovals are where uh, President Obama's were in his right. first year. Ali, it's sort of amazing in one hand, but it's also not necessarily amazing in the other, because I think the American public sees through the mainstream media and if you want to talk about polling and popularity, they're sinking like a rock. Yeah, absolutely. And I've always said this, that Donald Trump's presidency is ultimately going to be judged by the results that he has been able to achieve for the American people, not what the media thinks about him, not about not on his tweets and not on the kerfuffles that seem to be sometimes surrounding his administration, but what he's actually able to achieve for hardworking Americans. And if the next three years are anything like his first, I think you're going to have a lot of Americans wondering at the end of all of this what exactly it is that the media is criticizing and resisting if all of these policies really are saving the American people money and keeping them safe. Yeah, and, and that they're wearing it on their sleeve. Uh, and, and so and right. we just saw in right. the last month or so a retraction of at least three stories, three stories that it were if they were vetted properly, never had to go out. But the eagerness to hurt Donald Trump, the kneecap Donald Trump, we see it with the press press briefings, the White House press briefings, the animosity and the disdain towards Sarah, Sarah Sanders, it's, it's palpable. No, I, I think what we've seen in 2017, Charles, is the, the pretense has been dropped. The masquerade in many ways is over. They have come out and shown their true colors. They are the opposition party that Steve Bannon talked about at the beginning of this year. I think the thing that's interesting, though, is they scream, well, you know, we're, we're the news. You should believe us. We have credibility. They've done this to themselves, Charles. You look at a Gallup poll from 1976, about 72 percent of the American people found the media trustworthy or, or very trustworthy. 
You look at that same poll in 2016, it was down to 32%. So it's dropped 40 points over 40 years. And they've done this to themselves, that this Trump derangement syndrome, they have detached themselves from objectivity and fairness to such an extent that the American people, I think, have looked at them and gone, you are an opposition party. Right. We don't view you as a fair and honest press. Right, and they've damaged their credibility in all of this. I mean, Charles, you talk about that stories, those stories that had to be retracted. These were major accusations against President Trump colluding with the Russians, and then it turned out that it was fake news. Anonymously. It was made up with anonymous sources. But again, you That's know, we right. talked at the top of the hour, but you know, what is the good news out of this? I think you're exactly right that it's exposed the media for their liberal bias. It has always been there, by the way. It didn't just happen with under Donald Trump, but it has but been exposed Trump. as hysterical, over the top, oftentimes sure. lying, misleading. The good news is we have places like Fox News, the Internet. <laughs> you can go and get your news other places. You don't have to necessarily well, well, begin. Th thank you very much. In fact, thank all of you very much. Uh, that was a great segment. <laughs>